So the S5 Mark II is here and it's probably one of the best value hybrid cameras that you can get at the current moment. But what if Canon has something sneaky up his sleeve? That's what we're going to discuss here today. So I was reading an article on newshooter.com. Canon has recently announced two different sensors. One is a 4K sensor that is super 35 in size, which is crop, APS-C size. And then they have a full frame sensor. Um, and both of these sensors are supposed to be global shutter sensors. So one of the sensors is 10 megapixels, and that's the Super 35 one, the smaller one, makes sense. And then the bigger sensor, the full frame sensor, is 19 megapixels. So that's not a lot of megapixels, but usually once that happens, you have a camera that has really, really good low light performance. And why this really interests me, because I think about something like the Sony FX3, right? The FX3 is basically a Sony A7S3 with a fan built into it. Um, it has mounting points on it. It has tally lights on it. Um, it probably has a few more um, video centric features in it that the A7S III doesn't have. But for the main, main part of it, it's an A7S III. And then Canon also has a Canon R5, right? But then they made the Canon R5C, which is the cinema version of that camera, which also has a fan, right? It could shoot 8K unlimited for unlimited record times because of that fan um, it has the the function where when you switch to video mode the whole menu system changes and now it's pretty much a video camera with all the video features that you could want in a cinema camera like waveform and vector scopes and things so it turns it into a like a real serious cinema camera so what if they took that Super 35 global shutter sensor with this excellent low light performance and put it in something like a Canon R7C? Because that is rumored to be coming out as well. I have an R7 and although it can shoot some really magnificent looking video, I find it to be very irritating to use for video. And I did a whole video about that. You can check it out if you're, if you're interested, but I don't love it for video but if they made a variant of it that was a cinema camera, just like their R5C, but with a crop sensor in it, well, two things are gonna happen. It's going to make it cheaper, right? Because the R5C is not really a cheap camera. That's a real serious camera. Uh, it's gonna make it cheaper because it has a smaller sensor in it. Uh, you could also use smaller glass for it if they ever make any glass for the system. Because right now for the R7, it uses an RF mount, but it could use RFS glass, which would be smaller, lighter, and more affordable, but they only have two lenses so far. So hopefully they develop some newer professional lenses for this line of camera if they decide to make it. Uh, you know, some faster zooms, <clears throat> maybe something that's crazy, like, I don't know, 18 to 50, but like F2 or something but in an RFS so that it would be cheaper than the expensive full frame glass that you get for the RF system. Um, but still give it, you know, a fan so it has the unlimited recording without having to overheat or without the worry of it having, uh, of it having to overheat. Obviously it's not gonna have 8K capability because the sensor is not that big to do that, but we know it's gonna have excellent low light performance. We know it's gonna have some of the best focusing in the game. We already know it's gonna have a global shutter, so shooting fast action video, your video is gonna look amazing. Um, this sensor also can do, uh, four, it's 14 bit at uh, 4K at 120 frames per second readout. That's insane. So imagine getting all of that uh, uh, data into your slow motion footage, how amazing that will look. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I think it could be a, a big competitor to the FX30 that is shooting me right now, which I happen to love. And I think the Canon R7C would have a few features over what the FX30 ha offers because the FX30 does not allow you to live stream directly from the camera. The R7 does. So I imagine they will probably give you that same feature in an R7C and just make it so that it's, it's less, uh, clunky as a, a, a video camera because the R7, I mean, it's not a video camera, right? It's a hybrid camera. Uh, it could do video, it could do pictures, but the way it does video, um, the, 
the options and things that they don't give you when you're shooting. I, I find it to be extremely annoying. And they could have they could simply just change the firmware and make it better, but I just have a feeling they're not going to. They're gonna wait till they make something like the R7C and force you to get that one if you want to do video and leave the R7 behind or use the R7 as a B camera. And here the R7C is your main real camera. So what type of features are you guys looking forward to in the R7C? And also, do you think that they're gonna use this newer sensor in the R7C or use something different? Um, what do you think they're gonna use this sensor for? Uh, be interested to hear your thoughts. Uh, go ahead and put it in the comments. And um, if you wanna see more videos about the Canon R7, make sure you check these out.